Hello and welcome to this two-part series on the various image formats that Blender can export to, as well as exporting a high-quality video from an image sequence in Blender. Um, in the first part we're going to cover still image formats, in the second part we're going to cover the video codecs and, as well as the audio codecs. This is a beginner level tutorial, there aren't any like complex things, it's just going to be me going over the settings and uh, explaining which ones are the best in different situations. So, uh, imagine you have your wonderfully epic James Cameron style scene that you've worked hundreds of hours on and you don't want that image to be ruined by horrible quality settings, right? Okay, so today I'll show you which formats are best suited to each situation. But first, I need to render out the scene. Um, so, here's some of the settings uh, that we're going to go over. This is your main one that you're going to pay attention. The main one you're going to want to pay attention to right now. We're going to go over this in the second part. Um, the display is just the um, wherever you want the image to show up at. The keep UI it renders it out in the background and doesn't even bother you about it. New window makes a new window and just displays it in there. Um, image editor makes one of the panels uh, a UV image editor and renders out the image there. Uh, full screen converts the entire screen into an image editor and renders it there. Um, these are cycles uh, settings I won't go over. Um, and then here's presets for dimensions and frame rates. I usually go with HD TV 1080p that's the standard for most cases and 24 frame rates or frame rate and aspect ratio is just the uh, you know aspect ratio whether you want the pixels to be like a certain size or the, the depending on which kind of TV you're outputting to with the HD TVs they don't have that kind of problem with older TVs you have to have a certain aspect ratio stamp uh, is just what it sounds like it gives you time date blah 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 it, it, it uh, puts the information in the corners of the render so I'm going to turn that off. Output is the folder you want things to output to if you're doing an animation. Uh, it doesn't do that for renders, so you have to manually save out the files themselves. And the overwrite file extensions, I'll go over that in the next part. Sampling, more cycles stuff. Uh, film, this is the quality, like if you want uh, the anti alias P a little bit. It, basically makes it a little more less jaggy around uh, the edges and adds a little bit more of a uh, blur to everything. That's what this part does. The exposure, of course, this is uh, something exclusive to cycles. Um, depending on, like, if you've ever worked with cameras, you know what exposure is. Transparency is just whether you want the backgrounds to be transparent as an alpha channel or if you want it to be the background color. Performance. This is another uh, cycle thing, though the tiles are somewhat important. It chooses which like blocks you want it to render out to. So it's going to be six. Well, no, 64 blocks uh, total, and it's going to render each one individually. Um, and then layers. These are render layers. You should, if you've ever worked with composition, you'll know what this does. The different uh, passes are very important in this case. I'll go over that and depending on the formats we're outputting to. Um, but you don't have to worry about this too much, at least in this tutorial. I'm not going to be explaining them too in depth. Uh, so first I'm going to need to render the scene and that's going to take about 30 minutes. So I'm going to render it and I'll get back to you in just a second. Okay, so now you have your flippin' awesome 4K shot that probably took hours to render. Let's say it was a lossy JPEG, right? Wrong. JPEG is the 
very last iteration of the render, if it's even part of the process at all. So first let's look, take a look at the render outputs that we have available. Um, to save out a shot, you just press F3 and um, you can change the output right here. We're going to go over in them in order and save out a uh, iteration of each to compare the quality and the size of the different images. <clears throat> First we have BMP, which is pretty much lossless. It's an older format, so it doesn't support transparency. It is 24-bit color, which isn't bad. Um, it, other um, older Windows OS's use them a lot, so it has very good compatibility between operating systems. <clears throat> Iris is a SGI format. It's typically used on Unix OS, so like Linux type of stuff, so you usually won't be using it. It does have an alpha channel though, which is nice. PNG is probably one of my favorites as an end product if you want to distribute it online or whatever because it has 32-bit colors, so that means 16 million colors. So all of which uh, ha can have an alpha channel, and some of those 16 million colors are alpha um, variations, but it can have compression if you want it to, or it can just have 100%. It is lossy, but it's not as lossy as, say, JPEG, which is something that has like the most compatibility. It is like the most commonly used format on the web just because of its small file size. It has decent quality for viewing but if you're like a enthusiast and you want the best quality possible then I don't recommend that you use it as an end product or within the process at all. Um, it does have 24-bit color. It has no alpha channel so you aren't going to be able to use it within a pipeline for compositing or anything like that. Um, I forgot to save out some of these. Okay so just call this render, save, um, save an iris one, and save out PNG with 100% quality. <coughs> and noticing that one takes a little bit longer. Um, JPEG. which the uh, you can have it black and white or RGB you can choose in JPEG 2000 it's a little bit higher quality uh, it tends to be um, like the algorithm they changed up a little bit so you're only going to notice if the quality is very low um, you can get away with just like baseline quality and have better looking than the original JPEG. We'll save out one as well, and it has an alpha channel, which is a little bit different. But it's not as widely used and doesn't have as much compatibility, I don't think. So it's sort of similar to PNG, but not quite as good, I think. Now, Tarja is stands for True Vision Advanced Raster Graphics Adapter, which is a mouthful. Um, it has an alpha channel, but RAW does not. The RAW version which is, I think, the difference is this one is like totally uncompressed and this one is like semi sort of lossless compressed or something. But this one has an alpha channel. I usually use these for uh, textures whenever I'm working with 3D models just because it has a very, very um, lossless uh, quality to it and <clears throat> it, uh, it just suits it well. Um, it's better than using a JPEG or whatever, just because you don't lose the quality whenever you're editing it. <clears throat> I'm gonna save out a TJ as well. Uh, Sign, Sinon, um, Sinon, I guess. These, okay, Sinon DPX, Radiance, HDR. These three are what you call HDR formats. So this is something that you'd use with a camera image editing program like, uh, I think it's called Lightroom, Light, yeah, Lightroom, uh, Adobe Lightroom, I guess, and what HDR basically is, is it can contain a high variance of contrast, and you can adjust it uh, really easily, which is something nice for photography, but it isn't particularly essential with 
Blender because you can adjust things in the compositor and you don't have to worry about that. But if you're going to edit it in an external program, then these are recommended depending on which one you which program you're using. I'll just uh, save out them for comparison. Okay, so now we come to my favorite, which is OpenEXR. This is the like absolute lossless best quality you can probably get out of Blender. But what's unique about it is the multi-layer aspect. Now, if you have a render with multiple render layers, it will actually render, well, it'll actually save out the multiple render layers in one file. So you can reuse them within composition. Like if you have multiple parts of the render and you want to save them out and reuse them later and not have to re-render everything over again, this is definitely the way you want to go. This is what I use for my backup, just in case render or blender crashed and I had to re-render I could just use that but um, I'm gonna try out multi-layer and normal just to compare uh, I'm not sure if zbuffer is just automatically included in multi-layer I couldn't find any uh, anything to suggest either way but I'll just save it and find out I guess but you do have you do have a very uh, Good quality it has HDR support. Stores the Z depth of the render, which is very important. Um, it has an alpha channel and has 32-bit colors with the f uh, full float uh, enabled. This is like I think either 24 or 60, 16-bit. I can't remember, but uh, and you can change the um, uh, format of the compression. So you can use a lossy or a lossless. I usually just stick with zip because that's the easiest way to go um, and they can be kind of big so it's not recommended that you save them out for like a, an animation they're probably the best suited for just still renders um, radiance iris now tiff is a little it's, it's like the I don't know evil no not evil but like just that weird format that nobody really uses that much it has a 16 uh, bit format with an alpha channel which is kind of a weird combination it's sort of like a toned down PNG sort of it's it's older than a PNG I think but nobody really uses it anymore that I know of but we can just try it out and see how it works so if we we can compare the file sizes um, all of these, you'll see that EXR is by far the hugest among <laughs> among all of these. It has the largest file size. The smallest file size is JPEG, of course, because that's just how it works. You'll see that JPEG 2000 because it's a higher quality uh, compression algorithm. Then it has a higher file size. The HDR files are, of course big as well. BMP, which is sort of, I think it's lossless. I'm pretty sure it's lossless. It's um, sort of, you see it online sometimes, but not many people use it nowadays. It was more popular way back when, uh, during 98 and XP and that sort of thing. Um, <coughs> you'll see the TAG TGA. Um, maybe I should, I can't remember which one was raw or not. I think they both raw and uh, regular save out as the same uh, extension, so I'll just save a normal one and then save a raw. And um, save out a multi layer because that did it as well. Okay, so multi-layer EXR and regular EXR. They seem to have a the similar or <coughs> the same file size, but if you had multiple render layers, of course it would be bigger because it's saving multiple iterations of the same render size, but it's on different layers or something like that. But um, anyways, so what 
kind of format do you want to go with with uh, these different types? So if you're just going to go with uh, final output and you just want to render it out and put it up on the web, I'd recommend PNG just because it's the best quality and has an alpha channel and all that. JPEG, if you want something that isn't as huge and you want to upload it to like some sort of image hosting website that has a limit on the size, then you can go with JPEG. Um, if you're rendering it out and you just want to store a backup and you want to reuse it and resume where you were uh, before, you can either use an EXR or a TGA. Either one is pretty good. Uh, <clears throat> the HDRs, of course, I explained if you're going to end edit them in a photo editing program, then that's, of course, the one you want to pick. <clears throat> so next part we're going to discuss the uh, proper way to animate a well to composite and save out a movie or an animation from blender involving an image sequence and then rendering it out into a correct uh, codec that will I'll explain the different types and which ones have what their advantages and disadvantages are basically so um, thanks for watching this part of the tutorial. Um, next part is coming soon. I'll see you then.